We've already introduced you to a lot of different agricultural contractors here on our YouTube channel. In this new video series, we'll be joining agricultural contractors Martin and Toyner at work. Bosses Christoph and Torben have built a flourishing business over the last 14 years. Today, the company operates from two sites in West and East Germany and has some large machines in its fleet. We're going to take you behind the scenes to get a look at the company's inner workings. We started this story at Martin and Toyner's home base in Lerna in North Rhine-Westphalia. Here they moved into the halls and offices of a former agricultural machinery dealer. The agricultural contractors now have 48 full-time employees and a lot of seasonal workers that help with the harvest. Part of the employee's morning routine is preparing the agricultural machines for whatever job they're tackling that day. In mid-April, there's often a lot of field work happening at the same time. As such, one customer can take up one of the company's capacities. For example, in one order for complete cultivation, Martin and Toyner took care of cultivating potatoes on 700 hectares of arable land for just one farmer. So that potatoes are only cultivated every four to five years in the crop rotation of a field, the customer leases the fields from other farms for one year. In spring 2023, Martin and Toyner ended up having 80 fields to prepare and plant. The farmland for the potatoes is usually leased by the farmer after the cereal harvest and the stubble cultivation. Organic fertilization and sowing of the cover crop is carried out by the team from Martin and Toyner. Subsequently, the tillage work is carried out in several steps and at several working depths. Here, care must be taken to apply as little pressure to the ground as possible. In the next working step, clods of earth are broken up, the soil is prepared so that it is finely crumbed, and the ridges formed. Two eight-row bed formers are used for this. This work process is carried out separately from the actual planting because it allows the work result to be set up in the best possible way without affecting the performance of the planting machines. At Martin and Toyn, several employees have been specially employed for the potato cultivation but a lot of experience is required for the entire process. The aim is to form loose ridges with a height of between 35 and 40 centimetres. The ridges are essential for the later mechanical harvesting. In addition, they help the soil to heat up faster, ensure a better control of the water supply and achieve an optimum yield potential. Edward has been a member of the team since 2016 and can usually be found in the workshop or helping with potato cultivation. In a best case scenario, the planting machine should follow 12 to 24 hours after the bed form. This gives the soil enough time to dry out, settle and warm up. Together, the two four-row planters can cover up to 30 hectares a day. There is a tank for the liquid application of a fungicide in the front hydraulics of the tractor. Two strips of fertilizer are applied per row. The nutrients are applied to the side and underneath the crops at a distance of between five and seven centimeters. The distance between the rows is set to 75 centimetres and the distance between the plants and the rows varies between 22 and 45 centimetres depending on the variety and the bulb weight. With propagation potatoes, the distance between plants is smaller but with potatoes for the food industry, it is larger. Now that we've seen the potato cultivation, it's time to move on to the fertilising. But first, let's take a look back at the early days of Martin and Toyner. Torben Toyner and Christoph Martin 
founded their company in 2009, without significant financial reserves. The two entrepreneurs started off by selling kindling that they had produced with a firewood harvester. Any profits were invested in the company, and they soon earned enough to purchase their first used vent tractor. The two friends spent thousands of hours on the tractor, started to make contacts, built a clientele, and worked their way into the straw trade. This was the key for providing farmers in the region with nutrients and formed the basis for the company's slurry and digestate spreading services. Their annual spread volume now sits at over 600,000 cubic meters. In spring 2023, two new Holmer Terra variants joined the fleet. The 652 horsepower self-propelled powerhouses are being used to tow Zunhammer slurry tankers with a capacity of 21 cubic meters. When it comes to implements, Martin and Toyner tend to orient themselves towards what their customers want. The 6.2 meter Kirkling Vector and the 7 meter compact disc harrow from Volma are often in high demand. Around two-thirds of the volumes spread each year are handled by the Neuposerin site in mecklenburg vorpommern Martin and Toyner were already working in the region as subcontractors before acquiring their own site in 2022. The enormous buildings of the former army barracks site were perfect for the agricultural contractors' workshop and machinery halls. Most of the employees working there are locals and they have been equipped with a fleet that is well worth seeing. Anya has been at the site since it opened and takes care of the machine scheduling and customer relations from her office. It's this Vredo VT7138's first season out in the field. There is probably no self-propelled machine bigger than this in the world. The giant gets its impressive 710 horsepower from a 16.4-litre Scania V8 engine. All of its axles are driven and can be steered. The price of the vehicle and the implement? Around 1 million euros net. Everything about this machine is triple XL. The displacement pumps from Vogelsang have a capacity of 12,000 litres per minute ensuring short filling times. The flex tank has a capacity of 32 cubic meters. 25 cubic meters are fixed and the additional seven cubic meters comes from the expansion unit, which can be folded in and out pneumatically. With a foldable 36 meter boom, the self-propelled machine can maintain an external width of 3.49 meters and not exceed the four meter height limit for vehicles on roads. Before we move on to the second Vredo, let's take another look at this combination. So that they can offer their customers all the spreading options available, Martin and Toyner also use trailed machinery. The Fent 1050 Vario was another new addition to the fleet for the 2023 season. Jarek usually drives this combination. He moved to Germany from Poland and loves working for the agricultural contractors. Attached to the 31 cubic meter Samson tanker is a 36 meter drag hose boom. When it comes to the direct incorporation of slurry or digesting, the Vredos are the machines of choice. But if you look at the spreading performance per day, the Tridum tanker is up there with the Vredos. However, the advantage of the 1050 is that it was also designed for pushing and leveling silage mains. On the other hand, the Vredos really stand out from the crowd when it comes to driving in challenging conditions. Thanks to their enormous tyres and tyre pressure regulating systems, the self-propelled machines were able to start working a few weeks earlier, despite the wet weather this spring. When it comes to May sowing, Martin and Toyner go full throttle. The Vedestadt Tempo 5 
was designed to work at high speeds, and when attached to the easily maneuverable 6R, it can cover a lot of ground. Depending on the seedbed preparation, driving speeds of up to 17 km per hour can be reached without the seed placement accuracy being affected. Lennart came over to mecklenburg vorpommern from Lower Saxony, especially for this job. He completed the agricultural contractor training. Martin and Toy operate three of these precision seed drills, and each can cover around 1,400 hectares. Alongside maize, canola and sunflowers are also being cultivated. The machine you can see now is the older of the two Vredos. The VT7028-3 is now in its fourth season at Martin and Toyna. After some difficulties in the first season, the annual workload per machine is now 1,700 hours. This puts the self-propelled machine close to the maximum permitted number of working hours in this country. Tristan is responsible for servicing the Vredos and does it in the company's workshop. He also works together with Torben Toyner to take care of the Vredo's machine scheduling. Both Vredo's are equipped with John Deere steering systems, which also enables a GPS-based width section control. Many fields are recorded and the tracks optimally planned in advance. Section-specific evaluations can be transferred to the farmers thanks to the NIR sensor. Thanks to the content measurement, the spreading can be done in a targeted way depending on the farmer's nitrogen targets. This comes in particularly handy if the fertilizer is coming from different containers. With stripped hill spreading, the soil can be cultivated in a targeted way up to a depth of 30 centimeters which is where the maize plants take root later. At 14 centimetres deep, the slurry strip is a certain distance to the plant seed row. The feeder lorries, which usually come from the company's own fleet, transport 28 cubic metres of fertiliser to the edge of the field. The Vredo has proven itself logistically with regards to the difference between the tank volume. It is not uncommon for the lorries to be accompanied by Tridum slurry tankers that transport the slurry within the field in order to cover the kilometres of the often giant fields in mecklenburg vorpommern And with that, we've come to the end of the first video in our series on Martin and Toyner. If you would like to find out more about the company, then you can visit their website or take a look at their Facebook or Instagram page. Here you can also find more information about any open positions and the training courses that they offer. The next video in this series will be up on our YouTube channel soon. In the meantime, why not check out the photo gallery at Farmworld.